We will call this meeting to order. May I have a roll call, Ms. Mayor Cook? Yes, ma'am. Councilman Grin? I'm here. Councilman Bond? Here. Councilman Shani? Here. Councilwoman Wright? Here. Councilman Lindsay is absent. And Vice Mayor Eggleston? Here. Six members present. All right, we'll have an inv the invocation by Chief Trustee. Father, Lord, we thank you for the day and all thy many blessings. Please be in this meeting tonight that thy perfect will be done. Bless our first responders, our troops, and their families. In Jesus' name, amen. Mm -hmm. Pledge to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I need a motion for action on the minutes of the February the 5th meeting, please. So moved. Second. Yes. Councilman Grimm? Abstain, I was not here. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Chami? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Those minutes are passed by zero one. Mr. Bridge, do we have planning board recommendation here? It's the e the email that you got. So it's the first step when uh, when you guys do uh, amend your zoning code. The first step is to go through your planning board. Your planning board uh, sends a recommendation to you guys based off of their hearing. That's what you have. So they are recommending that the particular code sections be changed. So uh, if you'd like for the record, I'd read the next steps. And that is upon receipt of a recommendation from the planning board, which is what your council has in front of them, council shall schedule a public hearing not more than 40 days after the date of the receipt of the recommendation. Notice of the hearing shall be published in a publication, general certification. Um, and then council action is within 30 days of the public hearing. So within 40 days, you guys got to basically just introduce that ordinance. And then within 30, you have to act on it. So what we can do here is not more than 40 days. We can have the legislation introduced to council at the next meeting or the meeting after that. And then you would have to let that sit for X amount of time. And then you have to vote on it. So when does council want the uh, legislation to do so? The next meeting or the meeting after that? And it'll just be introduced as like an ordinance. So you have your two read cycle. Next meeting is fine. Is everybody in agreement with that? Yeah, sure. That's good. Next meeting. Okay. We'll have some things. The ordinance is already drafted, so we'll go ahead and get that on the list. Okay, then I guess we'll go ahead with the city manager's report. Uh, Mr. Mayor, we, go did, ahead. we did have another communication. Mm -hmm. uh, the email was sent to all of us from Jane Slanker. Oh, okay. Shall I read it? Go ahead. Council members, I am thoroughly disappointed in the naming of our new 2024 building at Smith Park. Dillinger Hall, five question marks. A thief, robber, and murderer, three question marks. There are plenty of people and families in this town who have been wonderful examples of proud citizens and servants, setting good examples and making this community a better place to live, work, and raise a family. Why not name the building for someone we could proud to say they lived here? Why not ask the citizens here for suggestions? That would create, that would even create a, a sense of camaraderie or a name that is not a person. How about using gathering place or event center instead of hall? I would be interested in knowing who thought that name was such a great idea. Really not happy with that decision. Jane slanked her and then she gives her address. Now, two meetings ago, I expressed my displeasure with naming the building after a criminal. Uh, there are so many positive people we could name it after. Frederick Funston, uh, Roy J. Plunkett. Who is Roy J. Plunkett, you ask? 
He had an influence, on a positive influence, on just about every family in this country for 50 years. Roy J. Plunkett was born in New Carlisle, and he invented Teflon. Why not? I like the idea of uh, taking uh, recommend recommendations from the, from the community. And I would move that we direct the city manager to do so. Well, unfortunately, since I'm a contract, I'm not sure that motion would be accepted. So basically what I suggest the council to do, no one's come to me and complained. Um, we have such a small percentage of people who have complained about the name Dillinger Hall. As I spoke with the mayor and vice mayor about it multiple times, I can see both sides. Uh, but not one person has come to me and expressed consent or displeasure to me. Um, I'm willing to change it. It was not so much of a, this is what it is and this is what it's going to be. Nothing has been ordered um, permanently. No signs, no nothing. And I'll tell you why. No matter what first name would have been chosen, Slanker Hall, Washington Hall, which is one of the uh, names I thought of, or the Hall, the 1810 Hall, when we were founded, people are going to complain no matter what first name was out there. So I chose Dillinger for two reasons. One, because it's plastered on the side of a building downtown, and you talk to anyone from New Carlisle, that's one of the first five things I bring up. And then two, I knew it would generate public relations. I knew it would generate Facebook talk, and that's where we're here today. So again, nothing permanently has been ordered. If council wants to change the name, that's fine. I don't know if we have time for a contest, but I think you need to leave a name off of it, because Mr. Plunkett, some people may not know who he is, um, so if council wants to name it, I would recommend, I thought Washington Hall, because it's on Washington Street, something simple. The hall uh, at the 1810 Hall was when we were founded, so you don't have any kind of particular name. Someone brought up Bill Berry Hall. The thing of it is, if you put a name on it, it creates division, because not everyone has the same opinion on that person. Same thing with Dillinger. I've had people come and say, that's horrible. I've had no, a lot of people come and say, that's genius. So it really depends on how you set up. But again, too stressed to everyone at home, everyone on Facebook, everyone here. The name's not set in stone. Nothing permanently has been ordered. This is a community thing. We can change it. If council wants to change it, I suggest council pick a name so we can move forward and move on. So Dellinger Hall is not set in stone. So I've talked to a few council members about it, and they've said they've actually liked it. So really, if you guys want to change it, that's great. We can work together. We, we can change it. Not a big deal. Hey, the rest of you got an opinion? Well, I, I like the idea of including the public in some way, shape, or form as far as some suggestions. I, I agree. No matter what you choose, you're, there's always going to be somebody who's going to disagree. Um, but coming up with some mechanism to allow citizens to, for input for that would probably help. Maybe we'll get a little bit of that. So I'm I'm open to changing it, or at least opening the, the opportunity to change it. I guess. And I'll see what kind of response we can get. Yeah. Can I ask how you're going to separate between who's a citizen, who's a not? Okay. I mean, I if you want to open it up for citizen suggestions, maybe post it on the. City Facebook page, ask for suggestions, and vet out if they're citizens or not from there. That's a lot of work to be done, and I think, well, that's a, that's a lot of work. I'm not. Gonna, I don't have the staff or the time to sit there and go through and de de decipher through the comments. You know, I think the general thing is. You keep a name off of it because that not everyone's going to be a, a, a in line with that name. You do something generic like a Washington Street Hall or the 1810 Hall. No one can argue the the, the, eight, the hall at 1810 or the 1810 Hall. That's another factor. It's very neutral. It, it, we can have a plaque. This is the reason why we called the hall at 18 things. We were founded in 1810. So uh, I looked at we looked at the Teflon stuff, but just. Do you talk to anyone in New Carlisle? They don't know Teflon was made here. It's you, it's Dillinger. And I did, I went out and asked plenty of people their opinion on that name before I brought it to council. And it was primarily, oh, that's cool. You had some people like, eh, that's unbecoming. Which I can see both sides, which I expressed that to Ms. Agleson the entire time. 
So, but I don't know if we have time to sit here and do this like public outreach because you don't know who's going to filter through, who's not a citizen, who's not a citizen. I think if we'd agree like between Washington Hall or the 1810 Hall or something like that, just so I can allow to get permanent signage to move on, it's a neutral, it's really no, really no <laughs> argument because it's just a neutral thing in my opinion. Kathy, any input? I don't know. I kind of like the name Dillinger Hall, but agree, and I agree with other people that it does have kind of a sure. negative overturn in a way. But gosh, I hate to waste our time going back and redoing something that's done. I don't know. It just seems like we have more important things to do and get done, in my opinion. If you guys want to change it, I'm fine with it. But for me, it's not critical. May I? And, there, and there's, uh, there's a very good observation. The only thing we've done, we'd have to change, and I did this deliberately, is our forms online. And anything that we have printed out at the city building. So we keep maybe five printed applications, and then the rest is all online. So like I said, nothing permanent has been uh, ordered as far as signage. So there's not so much we have to go back and do, because there hasn't been a lot permanently done. Do I hear a motion of which way to proceed? Graham has motion with the original motion. I uh, withdraw that motion and I move that Yes, we, Graham has a motion. I'm sorry. Okay. I move that we uh, seek public comment on the naming of the new shelter house. And I will field the responses and check and make sure the residents. Do I hear a second? Second. Do I have got a motion and a second? So what are you, what's going on now? What are you going to do? Seek public comments and I will filter through them. Okay. Make sure they are residents. Okay. You can easily check that against voter registration. Sure, sure. I, I didn't hear you. You can easily check that against voter registration. No, I heard that. I didn't hear the first uh -huh. part. I'm sorry. Second by Tom. Mm -hmm. Okay. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Motion passes 5-0. Five 5-0. Zero. Five zero. Six, Six to zero. Zero. <laughs> 6 to 0. Excuse me. All right. Now are we ready for the city manager's report? So that vote takes, you're going to put it on Facebook and you're going to fill the comments. So that's an operational th thing or, so you'll take care of all that. I don't, we don't have to do anything over here. Okay. All right. Ready, Mr. Ready to go. All right. So city manager report for February 20th, 2024. We're started with our service report with our assistant city manager, Howard Kitko. Good evening. Thank you, Mr. Bridge, Mayor, members of council, members of the public. Uh, we'll start off with the Public Works Department. Uh, the crews have been installing some new park rule, park and lease rules at various parks. Uh, some of them already been done, so if you go at least here around Smith Park, we got them around the different um, uh, entrances. They are a larger white sign with brown lettering, and then below that is a leash with, uh, you know, pick up uh, your dogs. Um, stuff and then it also uh, cites the code in there as well. Winter pothole repair has been ongoing. We do have some coal patch on site so if anybody sees a pothole we didn't get uh, more welcome to call it in and we'll get out there and get it taken care of. Uh, we are currently preparing for the parks and streetscape improvements for 2024. Almost everything that we will be that will be going up like it was on for the flower baskets is already on order and then we continue on with snow and ice removal. Under the water department, um, the only update really is with the lead uh, water main and service, lane, uh, service main replacement project. We are about three quarters of the way done with the survey. As you've seen crews between Clay, Lay, uh, Main, and then from Jefferson through Lake. Uh, we've, uh, Choice One Engineering has been going through and doing a survey to locate all the utilities that could be in the area all the way up into the private citizens' walls of their house. Trees, bushes, sidewalks, everything. So the goal with this project, obviously, is to get our portion up to the curb stop completed. 
we did find in some surveying, well, in our inspections, that when the new 16 inch water main went down Pike Street, down Madison, they'd already moved those residents off their old lead service lines, which is good, we did not know that. Um, usually we just don't tear up the road for it, but we potholed a few areas and found that they did replace, cut off the lead gooseneck and put copper. So what that leaves us to is just doing the private side. So right now I'm in talking, works with the EPA to see if, if we run short when it comes time for the contract, this goes out to bid and we need more fund, funding to get the additional private side done, then I will try to keep council updated as this goes. Because right now we already have about 2.4 million. This may be another 200 to 300,000 uh, to quite possibly do the private if I can't fit it into the existing. Of course, this estimate was from 2021. So um, we're, we're trying our best to get it, get it fit in there. Um, under the sewer department, uh, we do have the plan expansion study. Uh, Carrie and I um, will be starting that review and then bringing that to council, as I mentioned last month. Uh, under road resurfacing, the county's getting ready to send out their normal form, let me know kind of what they're wanting to do and what we can contract them with. Um, I appreciate council do, too. Also, they uh, um, added the extra 100,000, so that is uh, coming up to be put into the budget so we can do you know, much more street repair and ADA ramps this year. Carlisle Park phase one, that is getting ready to start. I've already approved a bunch of uh, shop drawings and submittals. So you'll start seeing some work over there with the new basketball court, some concrete work, ADA swing, things like that. And then under the nature works grant, I've already seeking prices on concrete. And I do have my pricing uh, already on the gazebos. We're just trying to make the two come together. So that should be a spring project and then have that done hopefully um, before summer starts. Then on the additional uh, items, the only one I have there, well, I'll take it back, there's two. I've completed the initial route review for Monroe Meadows and the Reserve of Honey Creek Development Construction Plan. So these are the plans they send to the city of New Carlisle stating this is where they want to put their utilities, specific places where the roads are going to go on what you guys approved. Um, drainage, that type of thing. So we reviewed, I supplied some comments. We'll have a second meeting with them and then um, they'll get ready to move some dirt. So um, as well, you will see uh, some legislation come before you that when you see design consultants, those are uh, engineers that will help me inspect these two projects because it will be a lot going on uh, at the same time because they're about in the same um, uh, phase of their start. They could both start in May, you know what I'm saying? They're, they're not uh, away from each other, so it's going to be pretty busy. And the last thing, it came on pretty fast as I approached, I went down to a board meeting in Dayton to uh, a disc golf board meeting to try and see if we could bring disc golf into the city into potentially Brubaker Park. Um, there are some people on that board that live in Park, one lives in Park Lane, one's brother lives actually in the city limits and I think one lives north of town, so they have vested interest and that uh, a couple of the gentlemen have already walked Brubaker Park in the backside of Smith here uh, four times. So then I walked with them yesterday to see their thoughts. There is a, an initial drawing uh, to get 18 holes of a community size disc golf course uh, through Brubaker, the backside of uh, Smith Park. Um, we're going to start working on uh, how close do we want to get to the residents there on uh, Edgebrook and Zimmerman, Hillside, and um, where else am I missing? Um, but anyway, that we get close to, we don't want disc going into private property. So whatever is geared will be geared to throw away from their property fences. And then uh, I will be putting a letter out to each resident that abuts this property to let them know that what we're doing and that we are getting, you're probably you know, going to start seeing some dirt work, tree removal, things like that to get this put in and to know, you're going to see people coming. I, it's big. Um, people travel everywhere to play this sport. I didn't realize how big it was. So it'll be another one of those things like the, the pickleball courts that are getting done, the um, disc golf, and then when the developments go, this will just give a local community a place to go and it will be community more friendly and it won't be geared so much towards uh, these championship players that will be out there, but they still may come out. And that is all I have on my report. If there are any, any questions with the report or any additional stuff. And you want to have any questions for Mr. Kitko? Yeah, me too. 
Go ahead, Dave. Um, you're still reviewing the data on the 235 curve study? Yes. <clears throat> Any idea when we'll know anything more on that? We will have the final by the by the my next council meeting. Okay. Do you want us to put that part of the packet or leave it separate? The study. May as well put it in part of the packet okay. so that okay. everybody has a copy. Sure. Do you know that? Anyone else? Are you noting that? Are hmm? you noting that? Go ahead. Yeah. I have a, a couple of questions. The lead downtown where you're finding more from the street into the person's home, are those people being notified just so they can have an FYI in case they are worried? I mean, some people are worried about that. Yeah, when, when we get done with the survey and we have everything on paper and they're mm -hmm. designing the construction plans, once I know who okay. and what, um, we are also at the same time right now developing a postcard or some way um, we're required by October to have basically every house, what's coming in your house, galvanized, plastic, copper, whatever it is. We're hoping we can, by the time we get that out, it'll be going out in probably one of the next bills or some way getting it out there and hopefully get a good return rate. Um, and say, you know, if they do have plastic, things like that, we'll add that to the survey and to the construction plans. Before those plans go out and they start digging, there will be a letter that goes to each and every person out there that once we disturb an area, um, we're required to supply them with a filtration system, whether it be like the Brita pitcher, until we're done with the project. Okay. Uh, and then it, they'll, they'll keep it, I think it's 60, 30 days, 60 days, I gotta follow up on that, but they'll have a way, they'll know what's coming up when we're out there uh, performing construction, on what, they're, what they could be receiving, um, and stuff like that. Okay. Now, and you say, hopefully we can pay for their part of that too, and it won't go on their taxes? Or we are, will end up, unless they do it on their own, we are going to be required by the EPA to replace the private side. Because the lead was on the city side back in the 30s. Mm -hmm. So anything downstream of that lead gooseneck, they're only about 18 inches long. So basically the main has a tap uh, valve, mm -hmm. 18 inches of a lead gooseneck, and the rest is galvanized pipe. Anything past that gooseneck is considered lead. Um, city portion and private portion. So they're basically we're going to pay for the 1930s lead. Okay. Well, that sounds reasonable to me. I mean, as a person. So. Mm -hmm. um, I had, did have another question. Um, you're, with the gazebos on like the tennis court, or not tennis court, basketball court, is there a plan for where that stuff is going or is it just kind of who, who do you just just decide how that we have we have an engineer we brought on staff to help locate it in Carlisle Park but I have a plan if we, we'd be more happy to send I it. would like I would be interested in the plan because that's such a big park that we take no interest in it seems like so I would just be very interested in what you're planning on doing with that park like I've seen you digging up the old um, footing for something. I don't know what That's it where the new basketball court will go. Is that kinda. where it's going? Sort yeah, of? and then the old court that was there yeah. will get removed and eventually we get more funding that could end up being the parking lot where you actually drive up and be able to park in a parking space mm -hmm. to utilize the park. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. I had some ideas for that. So we don't have anybody that sits with you and helps you, or is it just the engineer that does that? Currently myself, and then I have uh, the um, public works superintendent who's also in charge of parks, mm -hmm. and then the engineer, and we kind of look at what's around, what utilities are going through there, right. um, what's the best way to make it ADA compliant, and that's where we kind of try to decide where things will go. Um, not set things too far back where they're hidden, so right. we try to bring things a little bit more forward, and uh, neighbors take, keep an eye on it, um, be adding lighting, but typically it's just two or three of us and an engineer. Okay, well if you ever wanted somebody else, I'll volunteer my time. I would be happy to sit that board or whatever you guys call that. So that was it. That was my question. So, thank you. Yeah, Peg. On the lead pipes, how far east is that going? How far east? Right now it will go to pipe. So some of Main Street, so Main Street city side is copper. Private side is galvanized on Pike Street. City side is copper. Private side is galvanized, but Pike Street as far as it'll go. How far south then? Um, Madison. Okay. 
Any other questions for Mr. Kitko? Thank you, Mr. Kitko. Moving on to City Manager Report, Fire MS with Fire Chief, Chief Trustee. Council of Citizens, first off, I apologize for the report having December on it. It should have had January. Um, for the month of January, the New Carlisle Fire Division responded to oh, sure 122 EMS calls in the city. We responded to 11 fire-related calls, 10 good intent calls or service calls, and one false alarm. We had four uh, EMS calls answered by mutual aid by Pike Township or Bethel Park due to Medic 52 being on a response. We answered three mutual aid calls to uh, Pike Township and three to Bethel Clark. At the time of this report, our run volume for the year so far is 190. As of today, we're at 229 runs. Uh, we still have free smoke uh, alarms, uh, smoke detectors in the station. Any of the citizens need them, all they need to do is call us or come by the station. And if need be, we'll uh, come out and install them for, for the citizens if they need to. <coughs> Any questions? Go ahead. Is that phone number correct? Yes, sir, that's station number. Okay, 854? Mm-hmm. Okay. 854? Oh, excuse me, I'm so sure it should be 8845, I'm sorry. Okay. Any other questions? Thank you. Any other questions? Okay, back to you, Mr. Bridge. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Moving on to City Manager Report, we have the Planning and Zoning Mayor's Court that is attached for the record right here. Council, if you have any questions on that, please let me know. Uh, police report for the month of January 2024, 269 calls taken, 41 reports, 55 assists, 7 criminal arrests, 2 felony arrests, 4 misdemeanor arrests, 1 warrant, 28 traffic stops. 17 traffic warnings, 11 moving violations, uh, 1,961 business checks, uh, 16 code enforcement follow-ups, five traffic crashes, and 10 parking citations. Any questions on the police report? I have one. Um, can we be a little more specific? Are all those calls right here in, t in our town? Are they the... Or are they like in general? This is our stats for our city. For, those are only for our city, and anything they did outside of our city is not on this record. They should not be doing much of anything except maybe taking mutual aid calls. Well, they go mutual aid, I know. Mm -hmm. Okay. All righty. Yeah. Good question. Thank you. Uh, moving on to city manager report under finance report. Uh, estimated revenue is Seven million four hundred thirty-six thousand nine hundred four dollars, and the total uh, appropriations eight million four hundred sixty-eight million twenty-eight dollars. Uh, month to date is really what I should have said, which is received to date five hundred ninety-one thousand three hundred thirty-one dollars fifty-five cents. Expenses to date five hundred sixty-eight thousand seven hundred forty-five dollars and eighty-two cents. Uh, follow that up with the remaining bank reports and monthly net income tax compared to this time last year. Granted, it's only one month. We are up 5.3%, and we will see how that plays out for the year. Um, Mayor's Court report, uh, for the month they dispersed 3,930. And I think Mr. Grimm, Councilman Grimm had asked for this information. If I'm not, if I'm speaking incorrectly, please correct me. It is the Mayor's Court profit loss for 2023. So total expenses um, after everything. So the Mayor's Court made $21,065 which is a great increase from the year before, which was the year we started it, and we anticipate those to go up. Enon, I think, receipts around 40,000, if I remember correctly. So we should be hitting that, if not more, hopefully by, by, by the time next year comes around. But 21,000 addition, that's great. And that will be just funneled back into our general fund and police funds. And that is all for the city manager report. No, I am sorry. That's all for the finance report and mayor's court. Any questions? Mr. Mayor. Move we accept the finance report. Second. Good. We have a first and a second on the finance report. Mr. Grimm and Ms. Eggleston. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Shammy? Yes. Councilman Ray? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. That six I need a motion to approve so the uh, marriage court. So moved. Second. Ms. Eggleston is first, and, and Mr. Shammy was second. Councilman Wright? Yes. 
Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Grimm? Yes. Councilman Vaughn? Yes. Councilman Champ? Yes. Six zero. And moving on to city manager under informational items. Uh, Mr. Bales will be at, at the 3-4 meeting. That is next week. Mr. Bales is also a council member for Beaver Creek. So unfortunately, they had their meeting tonight as well due to President's Day. So they're on a similar schedule, but not 100% schedule. So my apologies for miscommunicating that, uh, but he will be here at the next meeting. Gives council additional time. Really critically think about what council wants out of the retreat. Uh, now's a good time for, uh, for council to engage Mr. Bales. And that way we can get that um, solidified and we can go and get it scheduled because I think that's going to be a great component um, to, to, our, to our operations. Fireworks display, the contract has been signed. That is set for Saturday, June 29th and is a rain out date of June 30th. That is, the, we have that um, fireworks show the same time every year. That is during our um, community garage sale weekend as well. So it's a very busy weekend, but please come out and enjoy our festivities. Uh, text my gov we're excited about this so this is some of the things that we started talking about last week i don't have everything i need so i'll go with here the council should have a, a beginning page that looks like this and also some additional pages that looks like an excel sheet so on that excel sheet i don't have a problem here, you have a keyword and you have a response so if someone were to text that keyword in that's the response they're going to get it is in spanish and in english now, i want to take note on this page we got here uh, this is a new, pro new a new service for us, so unfortunately we were issued a new number that we have to tell council about. So the packet online has been updated already for that, but the new number is 937-764-2112. So if you have a different number than that in your packet council, please write down that number. I will repeat it. 937-764-2112. This will be out for our public uh, uh, um, media pretty soon, probably tomorrow or not. Um, Thursday, but we are very excited to start this. Council, have any questions on the text my gov? Mr. Bond, I hope we answered your questions correctly with the Spanish from the last meeting. Yep, perfect, thank you. Mm -hmm. Any other questions on the text? No, That's not. pretty simple. They sign up, they'll have some prompts, you can choose English, Spanish, and you move forward from there, but we're excited to get this going. We also have the Clark County Public Health update that is attached for City Council to review. And we'll move on to upcoming legislation. That is our codification update. We're going to enter that. I wanted to have it this meeting. I just didn't get things done in time. We'll introduce on the 3 4 action on 319. So, under additional ongoing projects, we have the swimming pool with an asterisk there. At the last meeting, I said at some point in time, we've got to sit down and talk about this. So I don't know if council wants to set a date. I don't know if you guys want to talk about it now. That is up to council. We need some guidance on how to move forward. What does council want to see? Do you want to see a deep end? Do you want to see water slides? Unfortunately, we need to have a little bit more direction in order to get a good quote for council to come back as. I'm going to jump in here. Jump on it. Jump, jump in the deep, jump in the deep uh, end. I would like to see Mr. Kitko put together a and I will call it a spreadsheet for one of a better term. The amount of money that we have basically spent on repairs for that pool. The same thing with how much have we taken out of the general fund over the number of years, how many ever we decide on. Then also I'd like to see some kind of a cost of what it's going to be to put that pool back in operation for another year, let's say, at that point, then what's our comparative cost to a new pool? In other words, I want all of the facts and figures when we go into this meeting that we can relate to, we can give to the public. There's quite a bit of byplay that's been on Facebook about the pool why we need to keep it but as far as i'm concerned if we look at the amount of money that we spent how does that correlate so we already have that data we'll get it out to you colleen had regularly sent that data out through the years um, we have i think go back to for a couple years i mean it is a that is a service that loses money overall but then you have to take into account the service it does provide our citizens so council needs to find out what that comfortable dollar is uh, <coughs> 
but what we need and from you to facilitate what your request is is we can't give you an apple to apples comparison if you want an apples to apples comparison we can compare to what we currently have same square footage same layout but if you want a water slide that's a whole other equation that we need to know what council wants so we're not just rolling the dice as far as yeah. your guys' end result another thing too is I think maybe we need to set a date for maybe a, 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 a three weeks or a month, whatever. Because there's a whole other issue of bonding it, paying for it, and then that's that's a strategic placement as well. Because if we put it on the on the bond tomorrow, I don't think it's going to pass. If we wait four to five years, some of these houses are in. I think it has a lot better chance of passing. So I think there's still a lot of guidance we need from you guys in order for do that. So maybe we look at a. A work I hate I don't want to give us more work we don't need but a work session we start about half hour early or something and really sit down and we'll bring all the information we have then we'll get some information from you guys and then we'll have to come back with that more solid <coughs> solid final project for you does that make sense it makes sense uh, I just want us to be comparing apples to apples if at all possible and then to have the reasons for our decision whatever it shall be that we can go back to the public and say, this is why we did so and so. Case closed. We've already done that throughout the year. We took the liner away because it wasn't viable, and so we went back to the gazebos. So then we said at that meeting that as long as it's, it hasn't been leaking water at the rate it's been, that's been under control. So I think the last we decided was to go ahead and get to the gazebos and kind of just run with the pool as long as we could. And that's the motive, that's the, that's the mentality of work. So the pool can stay open. It's, it's not, so it's not, it's not operational. You know, it's just like apples to apples comparison is an apples to apples comparison. You've got this pool A, you want it to be a mirror pool A, and that's your apples to apples comparison. But we can't give you good data if you want us to say this is how much this pool cost. But then our our example data we're reading to you has the three water side system in the deep end. So I guess what does council want as far as the amenities in the pool? Do we want to be like a Huber Heights? Do we want to be like a Tip City? So what is your guys' vision that will help us streamline that? Is there any way we can come up with some cost comparisons as far as a new pool with some kind of a identity involved? I mean, I've heard splash pad yeah, uh, and I've heard several other things, but do you want a full-blown pool with racing? I'm sorry, laps necessary. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. the size. I just want to be able to come into this meeting or the meeting of the pool and say we've got it all laid out, and let everybody make a decision. Then, if the <coughs> council decides, so be it. Can I give you my honest opinion? I think we'd let the pool ride as is. Because if we give you something now, we're gonna be a bigger city in five years. We're gonna be a bigger city in 10 years. That pool may not be suffice for us at that point in time. So we're in the middle of growth. So why don't we see how we go for the next few years with our current pool, because it's not leaking like it used to. It's going to, it's, it, I think last year it made 2,000. So it's not losing money. Well, it had a transfer, but the year before that, it made it made a positive with no transfer, almost four grand. So it's doing its thing. Um, it's just my fear is this: we'll give you something now. Six years down the road, the city's a completely different landscape. And that, I can that, understand that, 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 that's a things change yeah. year to year. Uh, mm -hmm. We can have a catastrophic situation at the pool with a water table forcing that bottom of that pool up. Mm -hmm. And that could happen overnight. So we don't know where we're going at that point, but I think we need some sense of direction. Let me ask you this. This is something that we can do at a town hall meeting where people come anyway. We can throw the pool topic on that as well. I mean, go ahead. citizen input's going to be needed. Okay, I'm sorry. I agree with <clears throat> Mr. Bridge on that. Uh, once we grow, then we, we can uh, do that. I, I, I'd say just get a slide in there. That's my opinion. Can can you see? Is there a like standard? Like if you have eight thousand residents, this size pool is recommended for. If you have ten thousand, this is a size pool. Is is there a, a number out there like that that 
in the in the industry or whatever just to know we'll look i'm sure there is but the hard thing that's going to be gauged that is how do you can, how do you account for people not in the community to come to visit well so sure. that the, we you know we have a town of eight thousand you know we'll say for the easy conversation hundreds square feet will work but how, how do we count the other people coming in? And that, you know, here's the deal. We may find out that that is such a small percentage overall, it doesn't make a bit, all too much of a difference. But I'm sure there's data out there we can get. I like just, your heads just, yeah. just for future plans sure. so we know, if we, yeah. you know, if we had that. Howie, when we had that guy come down to do the presentation, the average for them pool was like three to five million, right? It was about three to five, five and then the other one was you know, maybe around two. It, it can yeah, change in hundreds. Two to five. Two to five mil is probably what it's going to cost you guys. We cannot get it like a la carte, like X number of dollars for a pool, X number of dollars to add on a water slide. <laughs> the bonus. A cart. <laughs> or 20 best slide. I think I'm yeah. no, I mean, it really is. I mean, that's probably how we'll do it. But I mean, so we had that meeting with the gentleman, and I learned a lot from it. Like, you can have a whole separate area which for your slide, because there's a lot of rules when you come and have the slides. It's all these little toys you have come with a set of rules that have it. They truly do. You know, so that's why I say we need input. You know, if we, like, was it the slide that had to have its own landing area? Yeah, there's slide, water depth, depends on the yeah, slide height. Well, it there, it, everything goes to the Ohio Department of Health. So, April's here, you got a lot of information about pool. The pool guy. Yeah. 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 So I don't know, it's, up, it's council's decision. Like I said, it's, it's, it's working fine. I, it's working the best it can be right now. Uh, we're gonna be adding the gazebos to it. I'm just, with so much growth, growth we got on the horizon, I'm scared to do the work and it not fully do the work and it not work out in the long run. But that's why we have meetings and discussions. What, what's council's pleasure? Do you wanna set up a meet or a workstation or do you want to let this fly, put it on the books for next year, or where do you want to go? I think we should vote on a slide. I mean, do we have to vote on a slide? Or? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm excited about that myself. <laughs> oh, we got we got a aluminum slide. We'll put it right after. Oh, you want a water slide? Yeah. Oh, you got to be more specific. A water slide. There you go. <laughs> the pool that he's right here. What is he here? A nice pool is an amenity that would help sell lots, though. Absolutely. Yeah. So the builder should pay for it. There you go. Yeah, that would be nice. Idea. <laughs> that would be nice. But... Hey, go ahead. I would like to see us just say, okay, well, if everything's good and our pool's good to go and it may be good for two, three, four, five years, that we continue on with that. But I really think we need to start our plan now because we need to save the money and get our get our stuff together, you know, get our ducks in a row. I agree with you wholeheartedly. April, I got a question for you. Can you give me a estimate of how many citizens you actually use the pool? You know, I would say it's honestly 50 and it changes on any given day. We have a lot of people that come from outside of the car line. It was only residents on certain days. How many? 50-50, honestly. Yeah, when you're trying to travel, and it ended up being pretty close. I'll leave it in the council's hands. Where do you want to go with this? I think we should start planning. Do you want to? <coughs> Not wait until the last minute. Well, I agree with you on that, just like Kathy has said. Do you want to? I don't want to say this. Do you want a work session or do you want to do this in a council meeting at some point in time? I say council meeting. Go ahead. What is council's goal? What year would you like to have the pool in by? Let's start that way. Like if you're going to get a new pool, if what we have is working, when would you like to have a new pool in by? And I say this with no disrespect. I don't want to do the work and it sit, the data sit for two to three years because guess what? We're going to have to start the process over again because prices have changed. So, council doesn't want to pull until five, six years. To get any kind of quote is 
pointless. It, it, and we can get a concept out, but pricing is, you know what I'm saying? Pricing is just, it's, it's gonna I don't change. know how long it's going to take. It's, yeah, the price is going to change. Most definitely. Conceptual is a different thing. Mike, you want in this? Yes, I do. Can I speak, please? <laughs> Mike Lowry, 16 Plumwood Drive. So I was, you know, I've read a lot of comments from the post you put up, and uh, you know, I think a lot of them were for the pool. I mean, I think we, most of us, pretty much know how the pool operates. It, you know, some years it'll make a couple bucks, and you know, the loss of it was, you know, around seventy thousand dollars years ago, and it's, you know, it's tapered off for, except for the years when Howie's team has to put in a decent amount of work on the bottom or whatever it may be, but. My thought of this was, as recently the past couple of days thinking about it, is I think this is a good opportunity to use the potential, whatever you guys decide, of a new pool coming to New Kalil to also be as an advertising piece for your new housing development. So people are wanting to come to New Kalil. Uh, you know, I, I don't like the idea, me personally, of saying we're going to build a new pool for whatever, three, you know, three, let's just say three million or two, whatever it may be, whatever the numbers you guys come up with. Uh, and saying that you know let's let's put it on the tax on the ballot for a tax because if I'm looking to build a new three hundred thousand dollar house and then I see well they're getting ready to put a an issue on the ballot for me to to vote for a new pool that would potentially turn me away from wanting to move that city uh, but I think if you guys start looking at this in, in a way that you can you know do it with a bond or whatever uh, you guys come up with without putting it on the ballot. I think that could be a really good advertising piece for people that are looking to build in our two new developments. Um, I, and I like that. I think what I didn't catch what you said 100%, Ben, but something about I, I don't think developers are ever going to put a dime towards the pool. But, you know, it's definitely creative thinking. But just in general, I think laying out the potential design and idea for a pool while you're getting ready to have two developments start would be a really attractive piece for someone who has some family, uh, a family, a couple of kids that want to be on a swim team or, you know, go to the water, you know, to the water uh, park or pool. So that's all I want to say is I, I think it's a good potential for those developments to attract new homes and, and new homeowners. My question was, I was under the impression that we couldn't go deeper. And I, I guess, I don't know where I got that idea, but the reason we can't have the diving board is we're not deep enough, so we'd have to go deeper, and we can't go deeper because of the water table. Now that was my understanding. Is that true? We had to get rid of the high dive because of the depth change, correct? Yeah, it's twofold. So the high dive went away because it requires 14 foot of full water depth. Okay. We're barely allowed to have the one meter, three foot diving board right now. I think your question is, could we rebuild a deep end down there? The answer is yes, but you run into, are we gonna put something in that in 10, 15 years, 20 years, is gonna do what it's doing right now? Which is, what's oh, it, it, we We've done so many repairs, crack seals, it, it sits in the water table. Mm -hmm. So yes, in the first many years, it can be a good solid concrete structure, but are they gonna look back and go, why'd you guys put this here again when you already knew that the deep end was, had an issue? Is there a better, uh, best construction practice to make it a little bit better? I'm sure. There's better concrete now than there was 50 years ago. But, you know, that's still that potential when something's sitting in eight foot of water year round. Yeah. And uh, that was important to me because it seems to me like everybody wants a splash zone and whatnot. I'd like, maybe, this is just my idea, that if we could turn maybe our pool into the splash zone, leave all of our stuff like that there, if we can't go deeper there, then we'll have to look at putting a different pool, possibly somewhere else. But I don't. I guess that's what I'm kind of kicking around. And if we don't want to talk about that, that's okay. Go ahead. I have an idea. Thank you for the idea. You didn't know you gave me one, but you did. <laughs> All due respect. Can I suggest that council maybe put this off until June, June when the pool's open, and we actually have a live council meeting at the pool? And then that way people are there and they can take part and say, this is what we want our community. We have it actually at the pool. Cool. He's fine with me. Swimming. Yeah. Swimsuit. I'm not taking my shirt off. <laughs> Swimming idea. <laughs> at least it's there. <laughs> we can get the citizen engaged and maybe we have a citizen day. Do we have to pay to get in? And you don't, well, you don't. <laughs> and no, that'd be, you know, we'll have to worry about that because we have X amount of people we can get in. Maybe we do a ticketed event. I don't know. I just thought it was a good idea. So we're talking about the pool. 
we got a few months to work on them anyway. They're there. I think the people would love to be included Absolutely too. They would. I mean, that's pretty obvious. They're going to have to be because it's, if it's a ballot, we're going to put it for the ballot. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's unless council pays cash for it. I mean, something like that big bonding. I'm pretty sure yeah. I have Joe, please do. Yes. Um, just to give you kind of an estimate, let's say this. Now, this isn't the gospel numbers. I'm not an accountant, but you know, if you take two million dollars and divide it over 20 years, because that's typically your bonding length. So you're at hundred thousand dollars a year, and you go with the rooftops. Right now, we have about 23, 22 to 2300 um, water accounts. So I just took it by 2500. You know, in a couple years, uh, that comes out to be about forty dollars per house, per rooftop, per you know, city. Um, property that's in the city no interest included and Typi no, okay, sorry. I was just say typical bond rates run anywhere from three four five six percent so just know that that's on top of that but 40 doesn't seem bad for a year on a house but I you know I don't live here how, how am I you know what's what's someone gonna say to my property your property is, is it worth forty dollars is it not and then how much will it be down the road and it's two million a good price we've been given two million is a pretty fair from two different companies, you know, about where we think we can sit depending on amenities. Thank you. If we were to relocate the pool, would we have to do studies to see if it would be an appropriate area? We would have to do a geotech, um, basically like Bowser Moore, and they come in and do soil borings just to make sure that the ground underneath this is stable. And if they determine that the ground is there stable, because you don't want to have to excavate everything out, even below where the pool will go in. They'll check it, make sure everything is good, so that way when it's put in, we, you know, con one thing about concrete, it cracks. So um, we would want to make sure. So there is some upfront cost to do some soil sampling prior to a new location. Approximately how much? That I, You've never done it before. I've been, I've never had to do it. Usually the developers do their soil boring, so I don't know what the cost is. Um, we'll be doing maybe some for some well drilling. Um, but, you know, it's thousands. It's, you know, I don't think it's, it's not hundreds of thousands to do it, but it could be tens of thousands to be able to do some soil borings possibly. Okay, thank you. So do we want to set up a meeting with council at the pool? I think it's a cool idea. I got it noted, but a reminder, First of June. Okay, we don't have to vote on that. Oh, okay. hey, you're up more than welcome, but I will remind you. No, no. If I remember, then I'll put it on my. Thank you. All right, where are we at? Oh, you're still with me, unfortunately. <laughs> Can I continue? Do Do you want a a work session on this somewhere in June, or you want to just play it by ear? I'll probably around end of second meeting in May. Bring it back up so you guys can decide what you want to do in the gym. Um, do you want me to wait, we're, we're, uh, you want me to remind you before May? No? Okay. Awesome. Um, moving on to see manager report. We got mayor's court, council chief with utility, the utility bill procedures. Those are still a work in progress and ongoing. Uh, <laughs> so as soon as we have some information, we'll share that with council. Additional discussion topics. I do have something under here I want to discuss. Uh, Mr. Uh, former mayor's here. So I'll be working on his key to the city, and I would like to go ahead and schedule a meeting that he can be presented that, so it gives him ample time to prepare and get his family here. So um, I'll be putting the order in probably end of this week, maybe next, after I speak with uh, Mayor Lowry regarding what he wants on it. And then it usually takes around a week or two for turnaround on that, because they send it out. Um, so do you have any upcoming plans, Mr. Mayor, that you would not be able to attend a Monday evening meeting in the May future? Um, now that calendar is full of an iPhone. So, <coughs> either the last one in March or the first one in April. So, either March 18th or April. Is that Easter Monday? Are we open? No, yeah, we're. I think April first. Or April first. Appropriate to give. Some <laughs> <laughs> we're just kidding. You're not getting it. You get it. You're like ah, April Fools. You're not getting it. We're <laughs> saying Are you free on the April first? 
Is that okay with council? Is that all right with everybody? Okay. We also have his gavel that I got in. It's been in now for a couple weeks, and it has the band. Do you want me to just give it to him early? Do you want to throw that into the ceremony as well? What do you say, April 1? Yeah. I've already spoken with Mayor Lowry regarding um, what the key's going to look like. It's be very similar to how we did Scott Griffiths, and so it's going to be kind of very nice and modern looking. So um, I'll get with him about uh, the text on it, and then we'll move forward to it. That is all I have for the city and manager. I'll be happy to entertain any questions. Did you skip over a couple of informational items there, the executive assistant? Yes, I sure did. I skipped over most of that. <laughs> business cards for city council. I'll be ordering business cards. Any council members need business cards? By the way. I think that's the only one I skipped over because I did everything else. Executive assistant. No. Um, thank you about that. Uh, interviews are this week. Mm -hmm. We'll be uh, having a second round of interviews um, either probably not this week, I mean not next week, the week after. So I'm bringing, I got three, I, I'm bringing you the interviews. Um, and my top two will go on to the next round, which is more of a skill based interview. Um, but I got, I got three uh, really strong candidates. Mm -hmm. All right, city, you've, right, you've got the utility billing procedure down here. Do you want to go into that? I said earlier, sir, the mayor's court and council chambers, and you, they're all ongoing projects, and as soon as we have information, we'll bring it to council. Okay. Yeah. Utility bill, so letting the finance department kind of get out for the year end, and I said that's the first project we'll be taxing the utility bill. All right. Do we, I want to entertain a motion to excuse Mr. Lindsay at this point. So move. Second. Yes. Vice Mayor Edison? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Brim? Yes. Councilman Long? Yes. Councilman Green? Yes. All right. City Manager Report. Committee reports. Uh, I'm going to make this one off the wall. I. Uh, well, I'll have to rephrase that. Had a meeting today with Evans Farm in regards to the fact that we could possibly lose our fireworks spot at the north end of town and maybe looking at another one. I think in turn it was a very good meeting. I think there are some areas that need to be explored a little bit further and I would like to know if council wants, uh, possibly myself, city manager and the vice mayor to again further meet with them in hopes of solidifying some of this area. I just don't want people to feel that we're neglecting them but I don't feel that a whole group of people going in on them is a good thing at that point. That if we can form a partnership in case this does fall through, then I think we're going to be better off to do it and do it later. Do we want to add a third council member by chance? So it's three instead of two council members going? I think council is pretty much in agreement for us to go ahead. So am I not correct or do you want a motion? No, no, what I'm saying is do you want to add a third council member to the group? You don't want to overwhelm them. But, and this is a suggestion here. I understand. We, we can, I'll leave that up to. As long as we don't have a quorum, we're, we're good to go. Council, I, mm -hmm. you know, sitting there talking with them, they were very open with us. Um, and I think that, like I say, if we get too many people, we're going to get too much involved. Or we'd be violating the Sunshine Law, too. Anybody got any thoughts? Two should suffice. I guess my only thought would be that um, I wouldn't want them to profit 
from our fireworks? Well, in I mean, looking at for everybody, you know. in the way of possibly doing this, again, according to the Ohio Revised Code, uh, it's you're only spending money outside the city limits. Uh, we would, we would, I would get, I would ask some auditor, some auditor connections I have, and talk to our finance director. It's a lot of money we'd be spending outside the city limits. So more than likely, what we do is. Um, have council pass a resolution or ordinance similar to how we gave five thousand dollars to the food bank uh, a few years ago. That way, it just takes it off administration. So, consequently, I believe that if we were to pay for the fireworks for the benefit of the citizens and get somebody else to provide the grounds, the parking, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, uh, and pick up some of the tab off of us that we could possibly do this again. Uh, I would say that probably this won't happen until the possibilities of 25. But if there's a chance that we could do it this year uh, and save ourselves some dollars, I'm open to that. I'm not changing it. It's it's we need to do it in house for this year, as we discussed at the meeting today. Right. Just because there's just too. I don't have enough time to iron all out the kinks. One of the things we wanted to bring to council too is what's council opinion. I report to council as a whole. So if council wants this to move on, I'm going to ask for a motion because I'm directed by council as a whole, not one or two individual council members. So motion to move forward would be greatly appreciated. One of the things we and it was a great meeting. One of the things that we all three had concerns about. What do you think the citizens are going to think about this? Let's just say that we go out and there's a banner that says, you know, New Carlisle and Evans. They're not a city business. They're in Bethel Township. Um, so <coughs> are we going to have any kind of backlash from our own citizens? Especially if it's, you know, some of the things we're talking about doing, which we haven't really ironed out yet. You know, because we're taking, we'd be taking the business out of New Carlisle is what we're doing. That means IGA is not selling out of beer. Arrow Queen's not busy. So there's a lot of pros and cons with this. And it's going to have to take a group decision to get there. And I think we all three today left that meeting with that same concern. What is the citizens going to think about it? So that's why we wanted to bring it back to you guys today. Because I think on the surface it may be a good idea. But we really need to get to the ins and outs of it to see the impact it's truly going to have. Because we're losing taxpayer dollars. We're not receiving any of that money. We're not receiving any of that beer tax, alcohol, nothing. So it's not just losing the, you know, losing the 21K for the show. We're losing additional of that too. So always open for ideas. It's great to partner with people when it's appropriate. But the initial meeting today was great. Everyone did, did well. But I think we all three of us have concerns. Well, I look at it in two ways. It's the possibility of losing that ground that we're utilizing yeah. for the fireworks now. Which means that if we do lose it and we don't come up with another spot, yeah. then we discontinue the fire. That's a good word for it. And what about, I'm sorry, go ahead, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, what, what about the land, um, what's the name of that? That little plot out there across the creek. You go over that bridge. Twin Creek. Uh, Twin Creek. But you go over that bridge and that land there, couldn't the fireworks be shot off there? People could still sit where they enjoy. I just hate the thought of our fireworks not being. I cannot there. answer that, but I would you assume. You know, I didn't think about that spot. That's elevated too, isn't it? Isn't that kind of elevated there? Behind the Twin, Twin Creek? Yeah, it's kind of up a little bit. That's a good idea. I'm going to look where the We can ask Mr. Elgin or yeah, that. One of the things we said today is let's, we need to find, if we can do it, and if we lose that land, we need to look, at least see if we find somewhere else. Yeah, and people would be comfortable not. being back. You know, we like our stores and our ice cream <coughs> store and all that. So. Yeah. Well, well, I think, just like you said, we need to investigate yes. whatever right. we can do in order to make it as easy as we can. It's yeah. such a cool event. You know, it's such great that we're able as a city to give back to be able to do this for the longest time. We haven't been able to. And it's going in such a positive direction. So I think it needs to be looked at for sure. Uh, so if council wants that to continue, I would like a, I have a motion that council directs um, that um, council as a whole is directing me to 
work with them on this. All right, I don't think there's any committee reports. Mm -mm. So I guess we go to comments from members of the public. If you will, go to the podium, state your name. You got five minutes? Go ahead, you know. <laughs> Janelle Zimmerman, 219 Prentice. Um, I was a little confused when we were talking about uh, the taxes. We would get money from the, is it property taxes to pay for the pool? I'm sorry? Is it property taxes that would be raised to pay for the, the pool? The bond. Or is it going to be just a bond? Oh, that. Um, it depends on how council wants to pay for it. Okay. So it'd be council's determination. Because I was just thinking, they were talking about, you know, we'd have a lot more because of all these new houses coming in. But it was my understanding that we won't be getting very much of that property taxes because of whatever that thing is called. The TIF. TIF, yeah. This would be in addition to the TIF. So a TIF would have nothing to do with this. Oh, okay. Yes, it's completely different. So they would still, they would still pay. It would still pay. Yeah. Okay, that was the only thing I was wondering if, if we wouldn't get, if they would get it instead of. No, the TIF money stays in that development, help pays for the roads and stuff, constructions on that. Okay. Yeah, so if you build a house out there and they put this as a bond measure and it was passed, you would still get the. You would still, you okay. Would still get, yes. That was just the only thing I yeah. wasn't sure about. Thank Good you. Good question. Anyone else? Go ahead, Mike. <laughs> Mike Lowry, 16 Plumwood Drive. Just to touch on the on the shelter, the new shelter back here, the Dillinger Hall. Uh, I don't think it's a horrible name. I think you definitely, you know, were right. It, it's catchy. Um, you know, I, I, I see it both ways. Dillinger Hall. I mean, it's, that's what New Carlisle is known for. Uh, you across the country, you see things that are named after bad people all the time. Restaurants. We was in uh, on vacation in Michigan, ate in a Dillinger uh, pub. It, had, it was full of Dillinger stuff. It was really cool, which, I mean, that wasn't a city-owned business or anything, but still, I mean, you know, cities and, and organizations use stuff like that, even though, you know, there's, there's a, I think there's a gangster or mobster festival, even, that, that, you know, that they cover a lot of historical things that, that gangsters and mobsters and stuff like that have done. So people use it to, to draw attention or, or for catchy, quick, you know, things that can be uh, you know, remembered. So, uh, I mean, I, I get what you guys were doing with it, Randy. I don't have a problem with it personally, uh, but I also understand, you know, some of the citizens and councils members that, you know, you could, uh, it's, I got one that's even catchier though. What is it? The John Paul Hall. I, what? <laughs> Say that John up. Paul Hall. John I mean, Paul Hall. He was the first, he was the first, what was he? He was the first, uh, the first settler in, in Clark. Yeah. I think, Clark, I think Clark County, Clark County. Got, and he got massacred yeah. by the Indians. No, you're people going to say, who's that? So, I, I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm just saying his last name and Hall. Yeah. So, oh, no. I just, just wanted to say that. Sorry. I like John the Carlisle Hall. Convention Center. What? I like the New Carlisle Convention Center. Oh, look at that. <laughs> look at that. Look at that. <laughs> there are how people call it. Yeah, I have 18 semis. No, not, not that. Not the convention center. With, right. with no convention. <laughs> right. <laughs> Anyone else? That's funny. <laughs> no, I think if we're going to name it, a name, it needs to be New Carlisle specific. Then. It needs to be something connected to New Carlisle. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. Clark, County they, they, Clark County may apply to Grand um, Forest, but they just certainly give money, their own money. Isn't if there's nothing else. I guess Mrs. Burner has the floor. Wasn't John Paul's house where Twin Creeks is now? Yeah. Oh, is that who it is? Oh, well, look at that. that there you go. There you go. There, there's the connection. That was where the barn is, right as you around the curve, just down the street from Mr. Vaughn. And contrary to what my kids probably think, I was not around that. But you were. I was. <laughs> Authorizing the city manager to enter into an agreement for it. 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 <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. 
I, do, I forgot to tell you. Compliance <laughs> services. <laughs> no problem. Ordinance 2024-08. Introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 4th. An ordinance supplementing certain appropriations contained in the Carlisle City Ordinance 2023-61. Ordinance 2024-09, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 4th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding that amends ordinance 2023-08 and the current collective bargaining agreement regarding certain union wages. Ordinance 2024-10, introduction tonight, public hearing and action on March 4th. An ordinance authorizing the city manager to execute a memorandum of understanding with the collective bargaining unit for the purpose of adding an incentive pay policy. Would you like me to read other business? Go ahead. Uh, additional city business, the CCA Taxpayer Assistance Day is Saturday, March 2nd, 2024 from 9 to 3 p.m. at the fire station. And then it is open for discussion on city-related business. Go ahead, Peg. I'd like to make a motion to have Randy continue the research of working with Evans and also checking on the parcel behind Twin Creek. Second. For fireworks. We have a motion and a second. Councilwoman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Duran? Since it includes working with Evans, I would say no. Councilman Bond? Yes. And Councilman Chan? Yes. That passes five to one. Please. And I have a concern if with fireworks, because we've always had had the party at the pool for mm -hmm. fireworks. Yeah. Can they see the fireworks from the pool if they're set off of that? It'd be tough. No. 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 Anything on the north side there, on the far side of the city, they're not going to see. You guys had issues almost seeing some of the ones we were setting off because they were low last year, wasn't they? They see the bigger yeah. Yeah. And would there be a way to check to see the, the parcel behind Twin Creek that Kathy was talking about? Yeah, it's Clark County Land could, Bank. Yeah, it's I'll talk for that. That's easy. I got a phone number for that. Is there any way we could check to see if they could see well, I don't know. who could see the fireworks? I had that meeting with Elsa coming up, so I'll pick his brain on that. Oh, no. I'm sure we'll look at maybe some sort of uh, contour maps or something to see the elevation to determine that. It is higher though, so that's a step in the right direction. Mm -hmm. Anything else? Move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion and a second to adjourn. Uh, second first. And second. Second. Mayor Cook? Yes. Councilman Duran? Yes. Councilman Bond? Yes. Councilman Chandy? Yes. Councilman Wright? Yes. Vice Mayor Eggleston? Yes. We are adjourned and thank you all for coming. <laughs>